really I think it's really important to tell you a little bit about why I might be qualified to talk about this topic. It is your um, decision in the end. Um, but first, Baloo PR, as we've mentioned, um, is, a, you know, we're about 15 years old. Um, like the family, we're in Berlin, London, and Paris. Paris was our first office. And this is our team. Many of our French colleagues are here today. Our team is growing so large that not everyone's on that slide. <laughs> we couldn't get a picture of them all. Um, we're very fast growing, which is exciting, and it's only a reflection on what's going on in these ecosystems that we are growing so fast and um, are so healthy. And some folks that we've represented are up here. Um, this gives us the best roster of any technology firm in Europe. I don't know anyone who's worked with WhatsApp and Facebook and Pinterest. Um, Waze, Box, Stack Overflow, you, know, you name it. Um, in fact, it gives us one of the best rosters in all of technology PR in the world. Um, and it's really been a joy to work with these companies. A lot of what I'm going to tell you today comes from conversations with the founders or top management of these companies. And who have we networked with recently? <laughs> I did not want to put this slide in. <laughs> this is the French team's choice. They take the blame. Thanks, guys. You're awesome. Um, so yes, we've worked with people like Arnold Schwarzenegger. This was just last year, yeah? About this time last year. Um, and that's my behind. But who I'm talking to is Jan Kuhn of WhatsApp. And you might recognize this guy. This was actually taken in Paris um, in 2008. So there's Mark Zuckerberg. Um, this is uh, Fred Wilson, who is a very well-known venture capitalist with probably the best VC in the world called Union Square Ventures. We could argue a little bit. Some people might say the best is Andreas and Horowitz. We can all fight about that over, you know, breakfast. Um, but this was also taken in Paris, actually, when we got him to come and do a review of startups back in 2009. Um, and this is more recent. This was at Slush about two weeks ago. That is Beezer Clarkson, who's a very well-known limited partner. Limited partners are the ones who give the venture capitalists money, i.e., they're the ones with the money. She's American, but she invests in both um, Europe and the United States. So she's uh, invested in Point Nine, Union Square Ventures, uh, uh, golly, um, including Mosaic, um, Early Bird. And then that's Albert Wenger, who is the other founding partner of Union Square Ventures. Um, so, you know, these, we have a pretty good network, I'd say. And then finally, these jokers. Uh, that's Robin Waters, Mike Butcher, and of course, Dave McClure of 500 Startups. So, a little bit, again, what I'm gonna tell you comes not only from my own observations, but also talking to all these people about investing, how we've been approached in the past, what's worked and what hasn't worked. And just a little bit, a little detail about us, which I'm gonna leave up for you in case you wanna get in touch with us. That's where you can find us. But then I have to turn the questions over to my esteemed colleague, Cedric. And I have to say, there's nothing worse than being interviewed by somebody who knows you really well, because he knows where all the skeletons are. So Cedric, be kind. I know I made the huge mis <laughs> I made a huge mistake in agreeing to do this, but okay. Thank you, Colette. Um, so, um, amazing to see all the nice people you met uh, during your, your life, and it's only the beginning, so I'm pretty sure we will add a nice picture for the next workshops. Um, the, the first question I want to ask you is really, um, can you tell us how you became an entrepreneur, um, what was the, the initial ID, um, and then how you became an angel investor? You want the truth or, or the really glamorous story? Okay, so the truth is I got fired everywhere I worked, so I had to start a company because nobody would hire me. Um, it really is true. Um, I, in many of the agencies I worked in, I got fired, mainly because I would say things like, we don't need to increase this budget, or we're not doing enough work for this client, why are we charging them this much? Um, which is pretty much the beginning of why I ended up starting my own agency. I can joke and say I wasn't hi um, hireable, but I just found that a lot of people had trouble with the truth, um, a, and a lot of my employers had trouble with the truth. Um, I also had a few situations where I saw colleagues getting abused by their bosses, and I thought, that just there's gotta be a better way to work than this. So really, the beginning of Baloo PR was probably in 1995, 97, but of course, I didn't get around to starting it until 2002. Um, and I, I also just felt that you know a lot of PR is pretty sloppily done. 
I'm sure that everyone in this room could ha share a horror story about working with a PR firm that promised them this and that but did not come through. And I, I just felt there was a better way to do it. And I thought that I could possibly do it. Um, that might be my Americanism, that might be my naivete, but I felt I could do it. Um, I became an angel investor because this is the very ecosystem that gave birth to Baloo PR. So I thought one of the best things I could do besides showing that I believe in it by putting money back into it is um, be a part of it. So I've invested in four companies to date, one French. Um, in fact, the ones that's popped is, is French. It's Molotov, which recently just took a very nice Series B about a week ago. Um, that was my first investment, so to have it go kind of hockey sticking up has been a delight. But I also have Latvian, um, a German company, and an English company. And um, I have very strict rules for the way I invest. I set a budget, and I only invest in companies that I can be very enthusiastic about, and that I bring more than public relations expertise. A lot of people approach me and say, oh, we'd love you to invest, can you run all our public relations? And I'm like, no, that's what my colleagues do. Um, what I, I have expertise in doing is, of course, growing company cultures, internationalizing, um, and if somebody approaches me and is interested in that, also my ability to help them with follow-on by introducing them to venture capital firms, then I'm more likely to be um, an investor or a potential investor. So that's really how, I mean, I, I just believe in giving back to this ecosystem, and there are plenty of great ideas, um, in fact, more than I have money to fund, um, but I think it's really important to do so. Thanks, and I think it's really uh, interesting to see that, um, you know, for um, coming from one job, you can really help all the community to evolve um, in giving back to them, and I know that it's really important for you to give back um, to, to the ecosystem, so thanks for that, um, and I know that it's also something for, for networking. Yes. So let's go deeper in the networking uh, topic. Um, and I know that um, you are always uh, and quite often saying that a weak approach um, in terms of networking could really like um, uh, kill the networking at the beginning. Yeah. So um, the, the basic statement is a, a weak approach, a, first, a weak first approach to anyone can really maybe kill the entire um, uh, opportunity or at the very least, it puts you on the back foot, and I'll explain what I mean. Um, there, we, there's a saying, I think we have it across many um, uh, cultures, you know, you have one chance to make a good first impression, and what you're all trying to do, and even I try to do, is you're often trying to, to reach people who are very busy, and you know, you're trying to get their attention, um, in some cases, you're nervous because you feel like this contact really has something that you need. You might feel that it's life or death for your company, for whatever you're trying to do. And, and so I realize that urgency. Let's, let's all acknowledge that when you're trying to reach out and network to people, there's an urgency behind it. You're not doing it casually um, and for fun. You know, there's something behind it. You need something and it's going to really help you. So therefore, for you, it's very important. But how do you, and that's what we're going to try to get down to, is how do you get the attention? How can you increase the chances that you'll get what you want. Um, and that's the problem, is a weak approach can really harm you. And I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I've, you know, I get so many, I get more emails a day for requests for things than I do from my own colleagues. And there are 30 of my colleagues, and I get a lot of emails from them. And some of the requests are things that are just inappropriate and don't show respect for my time. So, dear, you know, Colette, here's our business plan. Could you please read it all over? and tell us which VCs we should um, approach, and then could you introduce us to all of them? You just gave me a week of work, you know, that's unpaid, you know, and, and that's taking away from my desire to help my colleagues, my clients, do new business, um, sleep, exercise, see my family, see my friends. So, <laughs> yes, a lot, it's one of my big rules. Um, so I, you really have to remember that the people that you're reaching, yes, you want to you reach out to them in a compelling way, but think carefully about the request and the way you approach. We'll, we'll delve a little bit more into that so I can help you refine your approach so you're more likely to get a response. But that is, you know, that's the biggest problem is that weak approach. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, there have been more than a few times when I've just, I hated it, but I've just deleted the email because it just showed such a lack of understanding and appreciation for my time that I thought I, to even engage with this person would take like another hour and multiply that by, you know, 25 approaches a day. My day's gone, right? And I've got a business I need to tend to. 
Thanks for, so it's like for everything, you need to think before to act, yeah. right? <laughs> okay. Um, and if you have to give us one rule, the biggest rule in networking, what is it? Only one, I know it's hard. No, I'm going to break your rule, sorry. <laughs> I have the microphone, I get to do whatever I want. Um, there are a couple, um, there are a couple rules. I think the first one I started to talk to about is respect. Um, when you're asking somebody for something, you are taking away their time for the things they want to do or need to do. Um, so be very aware of that. Um, second of all, be incredibly specific with your ask. What do you need? So remember I just used that example of, please, here's our deck, please read the whole thing and give me feedback. Well, what might get my attention and might get me to do something is if they say, slide 54 has a couple assumptions about the market or about um, public relations costs. Would you mind just looking at that really quickly and telling me, you know, we put in a line item for 4,000 euros a month for PR. Is that, does that sound about right? That's a very specific ask. I'm sitting there looking at my email going, that takes me about 45 seconds, maybe two minutes. I can do that, right? I can do that. So it's a very specific quick ask and therefore, and it's also short. Your requests need to be short. Um, a preview pain long, right? That, those are the, so I, I'm sorry, I gave you three rules, but they're, they're winner rules. And if you start to follow these rules, you are far more likely to get um, to get what you want. I'll even throw in a fourth rule, which you've heard a lot if you're reading any VC blogs, get a referral. If somebody can introduce you, it's always a good thing, especially to VCs. Some VCs are not even doing cold requests. Most of them, I actually really disagree with that. I think you need to look at everything. Um, and I know some folks, especially like Daphne, et cetera, are really trying to set up um, an ability to look at every business plan that crosses their path. But some VCs will only work on referrals. So if you can find a referral, that's really gold. Okay, so sometimes you can, you can do networking in being introduced by someone else. Um, okay, so it's like a, a, a game uh, with three people. <laughs> okay, so if I'm listening well, um, you mentioned like um, to be very specific uh, in terms of question. Um, have a specific ask to be short. Um, you mentioned also respect in terms of time um, spending, and I think it's very important for everybody because we are all running after time. And um, it means that understanding that the question and the ask you are doing will add work on the plate of the people you are asking. But I think you forget some things, if I can. Um, and I think this is something that you are pretty strong at, is to be direct and honest. Um, when you are asking someone um, something to someone, be direct. Don't turn during three hours. Um, be direct. Um, yeah, something also you, you mentioned to me quite often is like, give a no option or a, an out option uh, when you are doing a, a, a request. Well, make, make, it, make it easy for somebody to say no. Yeah. And that's, so you might be saying, why would I want to do that? I want to rope them in. I want to make them feel like they have to answer me. If you show, res it's showing respect for their time. If you indicate, like I, I you know, uh, that I know this will take some of your time. I, you know, if you really, if you can't grant it, please do feel free to say no. That, saying that to somebody will, you, will increase your chances that they will respond to you. It sounds counterintuitive, but it is the truth. Right? Um, sometimes I even close my emails with, thank you for even considering this request. Again, it shows a level, level of respect for their time. But give them an easy way to say no. I, I, say, and I, I don't think there's ever been a time when I have given someone an easy way to say no that I have not gotten what I asked for because they automatically appreciated the fact that I was respecting their time. Okay, and we also make sure um, that it's a little work for the people we are asking little, little work, really nothing, like reading an email, as you, you were saying. Um, and you mentioned also giving something back in terms of, uh, of asking. So what do you mean? Is like a, a gift? Have you been reading what I've been writing? <laughs> You've been reading my blog, haven't you? No. Um, so th <laughs> this is another one. <laughs> this is another one. Um, 
and I'll actually go back to the family's motto of paying it forward, right? We, we were talking about this uh, at the beginning. If you can give something to someone before you ask them a favor, you've already created a, you, you've already created a bond, right? You've shown goodwill first. So, um, you know, a perfect example, you, and you might not think you have anything to offer, but, you know, when you're, when you're approaching someone, I'm making the assumption, but I shall go back over it, that you've done your, your research. You've Googled them, you've looked at the, maybe articles they've read recently, you've looked at their Twitter, you've obviously looked at their pro profile, you understand their biography, you really understand where they're coming from. And when you do that thoroughly, and with care, you can probably start to put together what they care about. Right? So if you read someone's blog, they might constantly refer to their dog. Okay, guess what? They like dogs. You know, maybe they're constantly talking about Kentucky Fried Chicken. Okay, they like Kentucky Fried Chicken. We have a journalist friend who loves Kentucky Fried Chicken. Okay. Um, and if you, so again, if you're paying attention to them and, and studying them with care, you can find what they care about, and therefore you might be in a position to offer them something that they would like or need. Right? Maybe just as a joke, you want to send them a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. For, you know, right around lunchtime. Um, you know, you call the... You, oh, you can't. Well, okay. Maybe in the UK, maybe not here. Um, you know, maybe you can send them a little dog collar. You find out that they have, you know, a, a dog... Send them a little dog collar or something. It, it, could, it could be anything um, that shows that you've listened and that you care and that you're following them before you ask them for something. Be careful. Big gifts are suspect, but little small things... Um, right down to the, like I have this wonderful leather cover for my MacBook Air, which was a gift uh, from um, a Romanian startup before they asked me for some help. And I love it. I love this thing. My team members want it. Um, but it was really nice of them to give it to me. And you know what? They didn't even ask me for a, question, uh, for a favor. They asked me about 18 months later, they asked me for a favor. And I remembered it and what they'd done. They didn't even refer to what the gift they'd given me, but I put it all together, and of course I was there for them. Now, would I have been there for them anyway? Hopefully, but when time is precious, and I had to make a choice, you know, of the 25 emails I had that day, guess who's gonna get the attention? Someone who was kind to me, first and foremost. It's always a question of gifts. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, okay, so I hope everybody uh, had the seven rules of networking. Um, yeah. Um, and can you, um, can you let us know about the myth around networking? Is there some? Yeah. Okay, so there are actually, I think, two that spring to mind. Um, the first one is that it's about what getting people to do stuff for you. If that's the way you're approaching networking, you are dead wrong and you're not going to succeed. It's not about that. It's not about getting people to do things for you. It's also not about power and influence. Um, what it really is, and what 90% of the people don't understand, and if you understand this, you will be doing better than almost everyone, it is a two-way street. Back to what I said. Giving something, if you can, before you ask, or afterwards. A lot of people enter into our ecosystem, which is a very precious one and a very generous one, and they just try to extract out all the good, everything they can. Right? They find one person and they just try to like, get all the, all the favors they can out of them. They ask, 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 and never give back. And that's not only repugnant, but guess what? As, as an ecosystem, we recognize who those people are and we marginalize them. We do. And I, see, I saw some heads nod nodding. You know who they are. They've already approached you, right? They're the people who've approached you saying that they want to be an advisor to your company, but then insist on a huge amount of equity and getting paid monthly. Screw you, dude. Like, no, that's not helping me. That is hitting me up for money. You know these people, right? So, yeah, I laugh. But it happens, right? And we get taken in because they show up with their big resumes. Maybe they've been, you know, in the United States for a couple years working at a big company that you heard of. And you're kind of dazzled by the fact that they held a VP position at, at Facebook or something. And then they, you know, you're honored that they offer to take an interest in you, but then it all becomes about the money. That kind of behavior cannot be tolerated. And we, ha and just, we marginalize these people. Um, and it's, so they, they've entered into our ecosystem and they're trying to sell stuff to us constantly. Always be aware of the people who are giving. Right? Who's giving seminars? Who's giving their advice? Who's sitting down with you and taking time? Those are the ones who are kind, but they're also the ones that you need to be modeling yourself after. Because guess what? 
They might be heads of companies you know, you've heard of and that you admire, but you're those people tomorrow. Start having the behavior now of generosity, but wise generosity. Use your filter. If you think somebody's taking you for a scam or using you, they probably are. Give them a chance, and, but don't become those people. And if it's happened to you, and it's happened to all of us, don't let it harden you from helping the people who are deserving. Don't let it harden you. Don't, make, don't turn your back. Just learn to identify these people and push them away and marginalize them. We all have a, a, a job to do. And I think this is one of the only ecosystems that is this effective in doing that. Thanks. And last question for me, and after you will have uh, plenty of time to, to ask yours. Um, can you give us some don'ts? Whoa. Things you do not. really don't do that in networking. Okay. Um, they're, they're going to be the corollary of what I just told you. Um, so, um, some examples, and don't be upset if you have done this, okay? The, today is the day you can change your behavior. So, if I list something you've done, don't worry about it. Um, one thing that, that is a terrible don't, and that um, I've laughed with many of the people, not laughed, but kind of rolled my eyes with many of the people we, we talked about on, um, on our slides, the people who say, oh, I'd just like to pick your brain. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Well, <clears throat> I sell my time at 500 pounds an hour. So um, I really don't want my brain picked. I want specific questions. Again, I go back to what I've said, specific questions. Um, um, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the people who basically just throw the whole task at you. I gave you the example of um, sending a business plan, asking me to read it. Um, asking me to give feedback, and I didn't know what that meant. Do you want me to tell you what font to use? Do you want me to tell you about your color scheme? Do you want me to revise the whole damn thing? And oh, by the way, I don't have time for that. Um, and then ones who basically throw the whole the work at you. Which VCs should I approach, and can you introduce me to all of them? You've just handed me all your work. Not nice. Um, basically, as, as we say, as I say, do your own damn work, right? Um, and what I usually throw back at people who do that to me very politely is, um, well, choosing a VC, let's go with a VC uh, example, or an investor is, is like a marriage. So you need to do your homework and think about who would fit well. What kind of, what kind of expertise do you need brought to the table? Um, and once you do that and are very specific about which VCs, and not just names, not just Excel, Index, you know, 0.9, et cetera. No, which partner or which principal at which firm and once you've identified who that person is, if I know them well enough, yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can introduce you. Um, usually, of course, half the people drop out because they don't want to do the work. Um, and then I ask them, when they want me to approach somebody for them specifically, first of all, I have to know the person well enough. I have to know the person who's asking for the introduction, and I have to know the person who, is re who it's being sent to. But they have to write the email. They have to say, dear Colette, I would like an introduction to Philippe Colombel at Partech because Philippe has expertise in X, Y, and Z, and I think he'd be a fantastic advisor for us, and we'd like to discuss with Partech investing. They need to write that email. It has to be a thoughtful, short email, and most people are lazy. They don't want to do that. I forward that on to Philippe, asking him if he would like to take the in introduction or not. He gets to say yes or no. Um, another, oh God, another one. I, I love people who ask me to introduce um, them to all my media contacts. That's a favorite. Um, I was like, are you insensitive? That's what my colleagues do for a living. Um, and then there, there's, there's really the bad networker. So I've had two hilarious bad networking experiences. There's the person who, um, well, I'll tell a story. Let's, let's say this person was a cultural attache to the American embassy in France. Not really, just a hypothetical. And this person met me um, and talked to me a little bit about what I did, and then proceeded to go around and offer my time to everybody she knew. So somebody, and, and in things that I didn't even know about, um, you know, the hotel industry. Oh, you need PR in the hotel industry? You should ask Colette to see if, you know, pick her brain, take her out for coffee. He, literally, he started, she started volunteering me out for absolutely everything, trying to get her network, she's trying to make herself popular by offering up my time exactly what was going on. So very embarrassingly, I had to turn down every single one of these and go back to this person and say, stop volunteering me for stuff. That is not what networking is about. 
Um, you know, another one, and this did happen, is a, 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 a venture capitalist who is a friend of mine, and you know, his one of his American partners daughters was in town and he just offered up my Saturday afternoon. He's like, why don't, why don't, can you just take his daughter to, to brunch? You know, the woman was 18. She did not want to have brunch with me. She was hungover. And it was my Saturday. And he CC'd the partner in question. There was no way I could turn this down without making waves for my friend. I did the brunch. We both had a lot of champagne. But then I went back to him and said, are you insane? You just volunteered my time publicly in front of your partnership. Don't ever do that again. You hijack my time. I almost sent him a bill for my time. I decided not to. But don't be those people. Right? Be very careful. Do not volunteer other people's time. On, just don't. And be very careful. You know, don't just introduce somebody. I, when you want something from me, ask me first if, you, if the introduction can be made. Sometimes I'm not the right person. Sometimes I know somebody else who is, and I can help you get there. Sometimes it might be a colleague of mine. But don't volunteer people's time. Those are just big don'ts. Okay, thank you so much, Colette, for all this knowledge. Now, guys, if you have any question, it's your turn. Uh, hello, I'm Cécile. I am a consultant in uh, branding and innovation. Hello. Um, thank you for your advice. I have uh, one um, question about uh, how can we make this networking contact uh, lasting in the time? Uh, you ask a question for uh, I don't know for a job for uh, uh, to find um, a, no, a client opportunity. They can answer you immediately, mm -hmm. but sometimes it doesn't work. But you have a nice contact, and uh, it's, it should be uh, uh, great to 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 have this relation lasting in the months and in the years. Mm -hmm. How do you? Uh, that is a great question, and I should have addressed that in my talk. Well done. Bravo. Um, appreciation is something that humans tend to respond to. Um, I don't really want, I mean, every, once a year, a quick update of what you're up to is fine. But again, if I get that from my 4,000 LinkedIn contacts, I will be doing nothing else. I don't want it constantly. But in, if something really interesting has happened, if there's a milestone, send me a quick email. And it can be a form email that you send out to a lot of people. But don't make it too obvious that you've done that, because I can spot those in a minute. Um, but also appreciation. You know, maybe, you know, maybe, uh, you know, I, I hate to go back to gifts, but if you see, like, you know, a, a, you know, a little chocolate or, you know, you make a little origami something, just a, a little appreciation or um, it goes a long way. I have one um, woman who has since become a venture capitalist herself, but she wasn't at the time. This is years ago. She was starting a company. Um, and I did her a favor um, by telling her that one of her investors was never, didn't have the money that he said he did, and it was going to ruin her round. It was going to ruin the round. Um, and it was going to destroy her company. And um, to this day, she's still on the anniversary of the day that I told her that information, very confidentially. She writes me an email and says, this was a game changer for me. Because what happened is, they, she was able to get that person out of her round quickly, she you know, raised the money, she sold the company for a tidy little sum, and then was able to become a venture capitalist. Her dreams came true because I said something. And a lot of people knew this information, but they wouldn't tell her. Um, and so she, every, once a year, she writes me on our anniversary, and it's really lovely. I mean, it's, it's nice to be remembered for what you did. Um, and you know, it's interesting now because you know, now she's somebody, I mean, I, also, I now go to her for favors. You know, at one point, she was kind of on the back foot, she was asking me for things, and now it's not like that, we're equals. So appreciation. Yeah, the question is, we talked a lot about emails and, you know, obviously the people we are reaching out, not necessarily venture capitalists, but, you know, cl potential clients or people who are enclosed in our community network um, don't have a lot of time. So besides emails, do you have any tips of other alternative way to reach out to people? Because Sure, just show up at their homes. They love that. Pick their children up from school, uninvited. Um, that's just really... <clears throat> um, I think you've actually brought up something which is, um, you know, what happens face to face and sometimes you can be in an event and all of a sudden be like, oh my God, that's the person I want to talk to right there. Um, and what you do is along the lines of what I just suggested. First of all, if you spot somebody who you absolutely need to talk to, oh my God, there's Sonali de Riker of Axel. Um, have a very clear ask. Walk up, you know, have your card, your business card. Um, be mindful of, of her 
body posture and stance, if she's trying to get somewhere, I mean, this used to happen all the time when we were trying to get Mark Zuckerberg or Sheryl Sandberg off stage, people would come up to them and they had a place to go, like there was a helicopter waiting, right? And they just wanted to talk, 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 talk to them. The key is it's not talking to them for a half an hour that makes a difference, it's making that connection. So have a very clear ask, ask the permission, can I contact you later? Um, and, but you really want to get that kind of, that, that human face-to-face -face and, 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 you know, say, I, you know, I'd really love to ask you about X. May I email you later? I'd be so grateful for your help. Thank you so much. Talking to them and hogging their time for 30 minutes is only going to get you remembered as that giant pain in the ass that made them late, right? We'll never get anything. Um, sometimes Dave McClure, it used to make me crazy, would not carry business cards so, he, so people would have to, he wouldn't give out his information, he would take other people's information, and if he was truly interested, he would take the contact. But be concise, you know, be concise, be direct, smile a little, um, and that's your, your best shot. But it, it can work, it really can work. It's happened to me more than a few times. My most recent investment, I was, I was like, oh God, no, please, don't ask me for money, please. And these charming women in Budapest totally got my attention by walking up to me and just saying, you know, we've, we've read what you wrote, here's what we've done, it's worked for us, thank you so much. I was like, oh, yay, you know, that's lovely. And then they said, you know, we have something, we, you know, an idea, um, we just wanna ask you very specifically about PR around this, what do you think? And I was like, oh, that'll only take me five minutes, okay. Next thing you know, I'm an investor. Ugh, I'm such a sucker. <laughs> Thank you guys, thank you so much for your time.